Hey buddies, Sunnut Sky here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far. In this video, we are going to teach you how to survive the weather in RL Craft. This has definitely been one that's been asked for several times in the comments, and I know it's something that a lot of people struggle with early on in RL Craft before they get access to a lot of easy solutions or before they know about what solutions are available. So that's what we're doing today. We're showing you guys how to deal with the cold and how to deal with the heat. First things first, obviously, biomes are heat respective. You know, snowy biomes are going to be cold. Hot biomes are going to be hot. Certain blocks that give out heat and cold are going to give out, well, heat and cold. Fire gives out heat. And things like water and ice and whatnot will, of course, give out cold. So lava gives you a lot of heat value. Fire gives you heat value, um, et cetera, et cetera. But there's some specific things that you can do to mitigate the risk of entering zones that are going to be too hot or too cold or to mitigate the risk of getting hypothermia or hypothermia when you're in these areas. Firstly, a seasonal clock can be really, really useful. A seasonal clock is made with a bit of nether quartz and redstone. You can loot these from various dungeons. Some mobs drop them. You may well have a few of that already. Uh, obviously, not worth having to go to the nether specifically for, so hopefully you have some already. If not, it's not the end of the world anyway, because you can kind of guess when you go to a desert or a cold biome and you start to freeze very quickly. You can kind of guess that it might be winter, but this tells you what season it is. We're in mid spring. So basically, if you're in early game and you don't have any temperature solutions, but you know what season it is, if you know it's winter, go explore a desert. If you know it's summer, go explore some icy or mountain cold mountain biomes. Either way, season clock kind of helpful with regards to knowing what biomes you can explore early without temperature solutions. <clears throat> now, a lot of these things are going to require uh frost powder and blaze powder these are the sort of core ingredients used for a lot of the heating and cooling elements within the game i have made a video on how to get uh heating power uh blaze powder and frost powder so if you are curious about that check out that video i've got the deets there for you now what we have here is the heating coil and the freezing coil or the the cooling coil these are crafted with as i mentioned frost rods and or blaze rods so they're a little a little bit expensive unless you've happened to run across some of these already and you put a lever on them and you just switch them on like so and uh, they're actually quite good they are they do their job quite effectively which is nice they're slightly expensive for a very early game solution but once you got a couple of rods these things are great you can just pick them up with you bring them with you if you want as well of course um, now there's two different sets of armor that you can utilize as well there's the ice armor and the cloth armor very simple to make. It's just wool for the cloth, and it's just ice shards or ice chunks for the ice armor. So these uh, these actually do quite well. In uh, I actually quite like the way the ice armor looks as well. Um, I like that it's actually see through, so you can see your skin through the ice armor, which is kind of cool. But yeah, these these do a great job at uh, heating or cooling you. You know, it's not it's not going to save you in a you know an ice biome in winter by any means. But, you know, if it's winter and you're in a plains or just a sort of lightly cold biome, it'll help. And vice versa for the ice armor. Once you start to get a little bit later game, you know, you can loot, you can loot these things from dungeons. Um, so you can loot these. In fact, let's, let's continue to look at temporary solutions first. Because you guys probably know about Aussie Liner. I've got a couple of tips on them as well. Um, but let's look at these solutions that you guys might not be aware of that you might actually utilize early game before you get Aussie Liner. So you have goo pack, you have goo pack cool, and you have goo pack heat. What these do is essentially, uh, once you activate them, it sits in your hot bar and it provides heating or cooling. Now you can't use it while it's stacked because when you right click, it's going to try and turn into a different item, which is an activated goo pack. So if you just separate your goo pack, you can then right click and it turns into an activated one, and you can see the temp, you can see the duration here. So it says heated for eight minutes. This will keep you heated for eight minutes, and vice versa for the cooling. Once uh, once this is a timer's run out, it'll turn into a used goo pack and you can just throw it away. These are not hugely expensive. A little bit of paper, a little bit of seeds and one heating goo. So it is also going to require blaze powder. Um, just a small amount of blaze powder. One for how much was that? Was that one for two goo? One for two goo. So one for two goo. So you had 16 minutes of heating for one blaze powder. Not too bad. Um <clears throat> Get rid of these. Th those actually do quite good. Good. So it's mid-spring, um, and I I went to a cold biome, like a proper ice biome. I jumped in the water for you know 30 seconds, then I jumped out of the water and I used a heating pack, 
and uh, and it saved me from getting hypothermia. So just these can seem like they can give you, save you from hypothermia. Um, I don't know if it was winter and I was in a cold biome if it would have done the same, but it was mid spring in an ice in an ice biome in water and it stopped me from getting hypothermia. So pretty good, pretty good. You've also got the heating and the chilling enchantments. Late game, I sort of use a combination of the heating and chilling enchantments with the Aussie liner. But you've also got uh, potions of heat resistance and potion of cold resistance. Again, it's going to need frost powder or blaze rods uh, or blaze powder. But if you have one blaze powder, making three potions, and then you can then crank that up to an eight minute. Uh, you can then crank that up to an eight minute potion. So you can get, you know, 24 minutes of heat resistance or cold resistance for just one blaze powder or frost powder. Drink these if you know you're going to go into a desert in the uh, during the summer, as an example. But the late game solutions, you've got your Dragon's Eye. Dragon's Eye is just going to completely make you immune to anything heat related whatsoever. Fire, lava, heat, weather, etc. Everything. So Dragon's Eye, once you've got that equipped, you never need to worry about heat ever again. And with to, just to make sure, you, you know, once you're sort of late mid or end game and you never want to have to worry about temperature ever again this is my general setup what i'll do is i have the aussie liner now aussie liner you can combine with your chest and your legs which i don't have on me at the moment which i guess doesn't really matter because i don't need to put it on i can just walk you through how it works um these basically will change the temperature that they give you dependent on the biome that you're in so they're so they variable temperatures uh, which are really nice you can get different versions of these now you get the um you get the plain you know cooler or the heater, but you want the Aussie. The Aussie is just going to be way better. As you can see here, though, you can make an Aussie liner with additional heat. So this one says extra warmth. This one says extra cooling. So what I normally do here is I create one Aussie liner chest piece with either heating or cooling. And then I create the other one with uh, the opposite. So whichever way I go, I go the opposite. So I've now got extra cooling and I've got extra warmth. So I then put these on my chest and my legs because you can't get Aussie liner for your helmet or your feet. Um, you can put warming liner. You can put warming liner. So you can see you've got a, uh, a warming liner for the helmet and you've got cooling liner for the boots. So I'll normally put one warming liner on my helmet and then one cooling liner on my boots and then a heating, an extra warmth chest, and an extra cooling legs. If you want to go above and beyond that, I also slap a heating and a cool, a chilling enchantment. I usually put these on my legs and my chest, I believe, because the head and the feet already have more enchantments available to them than the legs and the chest. So it's a little bit of a cheaper enchantment to put them on those pieces. All right, that actually ended up being a little bit longer than I wanted to. There are a lot of different solutions to hot and cold. Hopefully this is going to help some of you guys uh, not have to deal with those things, uh, particularly in the early game is when they cause the most trouble, when the damage that they do can actually hurt you. Another thing to bear in mind, guys, is as of 2.9, the damage stacks from temperature or from heat or cold, they stack. So every time you take a tick of damage from weather, the damage will actually increase. So you can't just sit by a nymph and out heal it, or you can't just sit with your regeneration ring and out heal it. It will eventually start to tick and tick and tick and do more damage. So if you're staying in a cold biome with hyperthermia for an extended period of time, it will start to get more and more dangerous. And I actually late game did this uh, on the server. I was just doing a thick battle tower. It was super late game. I had regeneration. I had lots of healing. You know, I was you know the, the tower was easy. However, I slowly but surely started to get lower and lower in health and my healing would do less and less because the weather was just starting to tick more and more and more and more. So definitely something to consider and be aware of as well. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, consider subscribing. I go live on my Twitch channel pretty much every day except Monday and Friday. I usually take for editing. I also run an RL Craft 2.9 SMP server. You guys would be welcome to join. All you have to do is jump on the Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv forward slash some nuts guy. Earn 3,000 channel points, redeem the whitelist channel point redemption, and you'll be welcome to join us. All right, guys, hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care.